thank you, welcome, thank you all for attending. Um, Midwest Optical Systems is a uh, precision optics company. We're celebrating our 21st anniversary this year, and we are well known for our uh, machine vision filters, which I'll be talking about today. Uh, biggest misconception in machine vision that uh, filters are an accessory. Uh, today we're going to talk about why they're a necessity to control the quantity and the quality of light that enters the system, block all unwanted light, and only pass the desired illumination for your system. We can all, with filters, we can also increase contrast and resolution, and I'll explain how. Uh, this, this image may be familiar to a lot of you. Uh, you probably, some of you experienced this and you've heard it before, that when you've tested uh, an application in your lab, it worked just fine, but when you moved it to the factory floor, it didn't work, or there were some fails. And here, the image on the left, we have a uh, representation of what most of our labs look like, controlled area. Whereas when we go to the factory setting, there may be overhead lighting, uh, reflection, um, maybe sunlight that enters the system. Um, by using a filter, we can essentially put an optical shroud on your application. This representation here on the top left is the spectral response of a digital camera versus the human eye. Obviously, you can see the digital camera is much more sensitive from the UV to the IR. Uh, that being said, there's a reason, there's a much more need to control what's entering the system, whether it be sunlight, overhead lighting, reflection in the, in the, in the area. And as I mentioned, by, by putting that band pass, we're doing, we're <coughs> essentially putting an optical shroud that's only allowing the entire illumination into your system. So the concept of filtering is pretty simple. Um, if we want, in a monochrome uh, camera or a monochrome image, if we want to highlight a, a color, we want to pass that wavelength. If we want to darken it, we want to annotate or block that wavelength. So here we pass the green wavelength. We can pass <coughs> the green marker in a monochrome image. We'll highlight that. Um, we can increase the resolution also by just using optical filters. Each, every lens has what's called chromatic aberration. Uh, what chromatic aberration is, is um, a lens will, will uh, focus at different wavelength planes. And if you can limit the amount of planes that enter in the system, you can inherently increase the, uh, the resolution. So here we have a standard lens. We were shooting a lens target here. And just by putting a um, bandpass filter on it, we were able to limit the amount of wavelengths that enter the system and increase the resolution. So a little bit about our filters. They're um, extremely durable, non-hydroscopic. Uh, they fasten secure all, we have uh, solutions to fasten securely to all applications. They have a long lifespan and you can actually clean them with most of the most harsh uh, chemicals such as acetone or alcohol. It won't affect the uh, coating at all. So the quality of filters, it definitely matters. The filters been along for a long, uh, been around for a long time, over 100 years. First used in photographic, uh, the photographic industry to bring out contrast in black and white film. Uh, same concept, we have the red umbrella. If we want to highlight it, we'll use a red filter. If we want to darken it, we'll use a green filter. It's a great concept. And with the uh, rise of machine vision and the development of digital cameras, there was a need to bring out more contrast in the applications. So engineers adopted this, uh, this concept and, and they figured, well, it works for black and white film, we can use it in the machine vision world. The only problem is, as you can see here, the digital camera is so much more sensitive throughout the spectrum versus the spectral response of photographic film. And this is kind of where filters got a bad name. You probably used filters in the past, you've heard filters don't work, they limit the transmission, they darken the image, it's pointless. I can do that with I can do it with the camera, but the problem is they're using the wrong tool for the job. As you can see here, a typical photographic filter uh, would not allow the amount of transmission needed for a digital camera. And uh, this uh, circuit chip you can see we, we imaged with the photographic filter uh, obviously lowered the transmission, darkened the image. But by using a machine vision bandcast filter, we're going to maximize the contrast. These filters are here, a, lo a typical long pass filter, they're, used, they're still used today. And the problem with that is uh, they're meant for photographic film. They're just, uh, they're only cutting out a portion of the, uh, of the wavelengths, but still passing the longer wavelengths, only doing half the job. 
So by using a machine vision filter, we're only passing the desired illumination and using the right tool for, it for the job. So I'm going to talk about our band pass filters. We designed our filters to maximize the transmission and to be used with modern day illumination LEDs. Um, we coat our uh, filters, are, are coated on both sides to uh, maximize transmission. Every time uh, light passes through a surface of glass, you lose 4% transmission. By putting coating on both sides, we're able to gain 98% of that transmission back. Um, and we also developed our filters to mimic the actual output of an LED. A lot of times you'll hear, I need a narrow band filter, I just want to pass that certain wavelength. Um, we purposefully designed our filters broad. The reason being is the typical uh, emission of an LED is 60 to 70 nanometers, plus or minus 10 uh, nanometers tolerance. Uh, so if you were to have any type of angle of incidence issues or tolerance issues, by using a narrow band pass, you could possibly cut up half the transmission of the LED. Whereas if uh, our filters will encompass the whole output. Uh, I seen you all probably know that white light is made up of the entire uh, color spectrum. That's important to know because you can, and as I mentioned, we designed our filters to mimic the output of an LED. So what you can use our filters in actual your testing. So here we have a blue LED, and we're expecting for the blue thumbtacks. Obviously, in an image, we're going to highlight those blue thumbtacks. But we can do use a white LED, a blue filter, and is, essentially mimic the results. So this is a great tool in your lab. You don't have to invest in all the different color wavelengths. You can use white light and our filters to find out what the best wavelength for your application. <coughs> After you find the proper wavelength, you'll definitely want to, uh, to uh, use a, the proper LED to maximize the efficiency of your application. Uh, here's an example. We use a blue band pass, green band pass, and we can um, figure out what the proper illumination would be for your application, even in the infrared. So, um, we manufacture uh, band pass filters in the, um, in the UV, visible, and the infrared. Uh, we also manufacture a line of narrow band filters. Our typical band pass filters are 80 to 90 nanometers, but we also manufacture uh, 40 to 50 nanometers for, these are recommended in more of a extreme ambient conditions, outdoor applications, infrared. Uh, there is situations where there's maybe too much uh, sunlight that enters into a uh, factory floor that I would recommend possibly a narrow band. And we have the same narrow bands as we do the uh, broad bands in the same wavelengths. Uh, now we get into a few applications with uh, band pass filters. Here we're, uh, we're trying to uh, inspect for a date lock code. Without a filter, obviously you can see there's no contrast. The background is yellow. By using a blue bandpass filter, we're blocking the yellow wavelengths and actually passing uh, the date lock code. You can see we maximize the contrast. This is kind of interesting. Um, this was an application that the customer was uh, quoting a high resolution camera. They were expecting it for a, a uh, orange dye. And obviously you can see the resolution is good, but the contrast is not very good. Um, in, the, uh, in the quote, the customer, it was too expensive because they, uh, they quoted a high resolution camera. So he went back and he quoted a low resolution camera and used an orange bandpass filter and was able to secure the job just by using the bandpass filter because they maximized the contrast. Color sorting is a, um, a very popular. As you can see, uh, we're sorting for blue and red bandpass, or I'm sorry, uh, blue and red caps without a filter. We're obviously no contrast by using a blue band pass filter. We're able to highlight the blue and we can do the opposite with the red and block the blue. Some might say, why don't we use a color camera for these applications? Well, as many of you may know, the most color cameras use what's called the beer filter array, which is 25% uh, blue, 25% red, and 50% green. Uh, filters over each megapixel to interpolate an image, essentially guess at the color to mimic what the human eye sees. Uh, this is uh, definitely noticeable in single color detection. As you can see, we have a blue fluorescence application with a color camera. Not much contrast. You can't pick up the, uh, uh, the barcode without a filter. You can, there's no contrast at all. 
And with, by using a blue bandpass filter, we maximize and essentially increase the efficiency of the camera up to 90%. Infrared imaging, uh, we have a series of infrared filters that essentially turns your standard CCD CMOS camera into an infrared camera, only passing the infrared uh, wavelengths. In this application, we're inspecting for the, uh, the barcode on the outside packaging, but the barcodes on the bottles were interfering. Um, just so happened by using infrared, it reflected uh, the, the, uh, the infrared light reflected off the bottles, but it was absorbed by the uh, barcodes on the outside, just maximizing the contrast. Same thing here with the, this um, black material. It just so happened that it worked. We don't see in the infrared, so if you're not experiencing enough contrast in your image or your application, I recommend highly just to try infrared and see, see what the results can be. Uh, fluorescents are becoming very popular. It's a great way to uh, maximize your contrast. The biggest problem I hear, and you may already see, um, you obviously have to use a UV light source to excite that uh, floor floor or the ink to have uh, that light fluorescence or emission. The emission will always move to the right. But the idea is once you have that, that emission, you have to block the UV excitation or it will be too overpowering in your image. So you, only, you want to use a band pad, a visible band pass, to only capture that weak emission. Um, a lot of times people will ask, how do we, how do we know, do you know, that, how do you measure for the emission? Unless the manufacturer of the ink can tell you the wavelength, it's very difficult. The best way I, uh, what I always recommend is to, to just try the filter, see what's best for the application. We offer a series of kits, bandpass filter kits. This is uh, one of our most popular kits, our FK200. It's actually, we're running a promotion for all the attendees here this week, it's uh, 50% off. It includes 10 of the most common bandpass filters, UV, visible, and infrared. It's only offered in a 27 millimeter, but you have a 25.5 uh, and a 30.5 uh, step ring, so you can uh, accommodate the most common ones as a machine vision. Uh, some of the additional filters that we, we manufacture, we have a line of UV blocking protective windows. We offer it in both uh, anti-reflective and uh, just clear glass. We also have an uh, uh, acrylic with an anti-reflective coating and abrasion resistant that's really nice for any type of food applications. And we can actually custom cut this on our laser. So if there's any type of uh, custom shapes or sizes you need, we can, we can take care of that for you. Polarizers, um, these, these help with reducing specular glare in an image. Um, it's always important if you use a polarizer, you want to know the lens and the light source to maximize the extinction. All our polarizers are equipped with a locking thumb screw uh, so that you can orientate it properly and lock it down and then it will be set. Uh, it's, it, it's also, uh, you need to know that there's polarizers for the visible spectrum and the infrared. Visible polarizers are only um, Effective from 400 to 700 nanometers, anything above 700 nanometers, you'll need an infrared polarizer. Uh, this is an interesting application where we're inspecting the labels on these bottles, and here's proof to where if you're only using a lens, uh, polarizer over the lens, you can see you can minimize the reflection, but until you put a polarizer in it over the light source and the lens, we can really maximize the extinction. We took it one step further and we used a polarizer or a lens, the light source, and we used the bandpass filter to limit the amount of wavelengths that enter the system. So less wavelengths enter the system, less reflection we're having. We actually maximize the contrast. All our filters are equipped with male and female threads so they can be threaded together in situations like this. We offer a series of neutral density filters, uh, just like the polarizers. These are uh, <coughs> neutral density filters for the visible spectrum and the infrared, and these are used to remove saturation in an image. Short pass filters, these are typically used for color cameras to give it more natural color rendition to an image. Uh, it's a unique application, and maybe you have all run into this, uh, maybe uh, high heat, high temperature, or welding applications. In these applications, there's, there tends to be a lot of saturation in an image, or uh, too much of the red channels that come through. Uh, this was a <coughs> metal application, and there was a blooming effect 
that was occurring. So what we did was we used a short pass filter to limit the amount of red channels that passed into the system. And then we also used one of our neutral density filters to remove the saturation. We have a series of dual band pass filters. These filters are very popular in the ITS security market. What it does is it allows the visible spectrum to give you a uh, to pass to, in a color camera to give you a natural color rendition during the day. And then it also passes a line of uh, a band pass of infrared so that you can use artificial illumination at night or an IR uh, LED. Essentially it turns your camera into a day night without the switching factor of uh, uh, even though we don't recommend recommend them, we do have a series of long pass filters. All our long pass filters are air coated on uh, both sides. Um, we do have uh, where I would typically recommend a long pass filter would be if you're trying to pass two or more wavelengths, or if it's a completely controlled area to save cost. And then we also have a series of acrylic air coated. A long pass filters that are great for uh, like camera enclosures, ITS market, things like that. Uh, color light balancing filters, these are great to use with color cameras. It's, uh, it's a great way to control the light balancing. Definitely recommended if you can control the light <coughs> through the optics rather than the software. Uh, you, can, you know, it, it's much more efficient and crisper image. We have mounts for any solution or any system. Uh, we manufacture mounts all the way from a 22.5 all the way up to a 105. Uh, for any lens that does not have filter threads, we have slip mount adapters. We also have our C mount uh, filter that we can thread on in front of the sensor. Like I said, we are custom optics manufactured, so custom shapes or sizes are not a problem. The time is very quick, usually 7 to 10 days. Uh, we have plenty of accessories. We make lens enclosures step up and step down rings, extension tubes. We also have this right angle attachment that's been very popular for us. Uh, please feel free to stop by the booth and I can explain more about these uh, accessories. And then outside of the filters, we also offer um, uh, precision windows, light pipes, dust covers, diffusers, mirrors, beam splitters. Uh, so any type of a custom optic application, please uh, feel free to submit your request to call. So that's all I have here. Uh, the one thing I want to just take away is that uh, even when testing with filters, if you do not see an appreciable uh, difference in contrast or resolution, it's, it's a cheap insurance for your system and to, to ensure the longevity of the application. So uh, thank you very much for coming. And uh, if you have any questions. Thank you very much, Mike. That was very interesting.